What's going on everyone? You're watching the Iron Gordon channel. Thank you for being here. Today, I'm going to show you step-by-step step how I make this thing. Well, let's get in the project. <clears throat> okay, first thing, I'm going to put out some disclaimers. Number one, this does take some artistic ability. I've done my best to explain how to do it in a pretty basic, straightforward manner, but you're going to have to have some predisposed knowledge of how to use spray paint, some brush paint, some power tools, you get it, okay? I'm going to do my best to explain the techniques. I'm going to do my best to explain what I'm doing along the way. It does take artistic ability to do art projects. Weird. Number two, I use power tools in this video. I use a drill, I use a chop saw, I use an orbital sander, I use a table saw. If you don't have those tools, there are other options available. Those are just the ones I use in the video. Number three, Pick a canvas that works the best for you. I'm using a sheet of aluminum because I like the way it looks when I dent it up, and it's a little bit lighter because I have to ship this thing. Just go ahead and just find something that works for you. Number four. I'm gonna put timestamps in the description for your convenience. I'm also gonna link most of the products I use in the description below if you wanna help out the channel. Purchase something off of Amazon using one of those links. All right, let's get into it. Okay, step one, I'm cutting the panel. Mine came out to be about 16 inches by 24 inches, and that's what I'm marking right here with a square. I'm gonna use a table saw with a wood cutting blade to cut this aluminum. It is possible, it probably screws up your blade, so cut it at your own discretion. Wear hearing protection, it's really loud. Step number two is gonna be sanding the edges. You just want it to be smooth to the touch. I'm using 120 grit on an orbital sander, and while I'm at it, I'm gonna round the corners. and I'm gonna sand the entire face to help prepare it for paint. Step number three is where I'm gonna make the body line and also prepare it for faux rivets. All I did here was measure out about six inches from the edge, draw a line with my square, and then went in about five inches from the edge and drew another line. I'm just putting a mark at every one inch all the way up the panel so that it fits evenly and that's where I drill the holes for the faux rivets. Now your drill bit size will depend on what you use for your rivets. This is just a smaller bit for the scale I'm working with. Stepping away from the rivets for a second and back to the table saw, I'm going to drop the blade down really low so that it doesn't quite go through my material so that it gives the appearance of two body panels overlapping each other. One way I've learned how to make fake rivets is furniture nails. They have a nice domed head that looks like a rivet. They come in multiple sizes. Pick one that looks the best for you for the scale you're working with. Make sure you sand them before you paint them. Then just start dropping your furniture nails into the holes that we drilled earlier. I throw a piece of tape over the top of all the heads of the nails so that I can flip it over. If you did everything right up to this point, it should look something like this. Then I grab a hammer and I knock the nail sideways until it bends and crimps itself down into the aluminum. Step four, I'm gonna make the bullet holes now. These measurements aren't super specific. I just wanted to make sure they were spaced out evenly. The first one I started about four inches down from the top. The next one came down to be about five inches from the top, four inches over from the first one. And then I threw a third one into the back panel behind the rivet. Grabbing a healthy sized drill bit, I punched out these holes and then I deburred them with a stepping bit just to make sure that it wasn't real sharp. All right, now that I have the holes drilled in there and cleaned up, I need them to dent inward to make it look like a bullet has actually punctured into the metal. And kind of a method that I've come up with to do that is I have a big chunk of wood that I took a foreshner bit to and I hogged out this good size hole in it. Then I, I have this wheel bolt that has a countersunk head on it. And all I'm gonna do is I'll lay my metal over the hole in the wood and put the bolt, let the bolt slip into that. And then I'm gonna hit that bolt with the sledgehammer and just let it get dented. See, isn't that nice? Oh, as nice as a bullet hole could be. And then from here, you just rinse and repeat. Step five, I am laying down the base coat of paint. First, I like to clean everything with isopropyl alcohol to wipe off all the grease and the dust. And then I break out the coarse kosher salt. It doesn't need to be kosher, it's just what I got. It's just heavy granulated granules, granu, gran, granules, 
It's chunky salt that I use as a masking element to make the paint look like it's been chipped off over time. First I dump it inside all the bullet holes in the surrounding area. Then I just kind of dust it all over the entire project so that it doesn't look too intentional and it looks to have a random pattern to it. And for the color, we're using this drab olive green camouflage paint from Rust-Oleum. I'll try to link it in the description below. Now, the important thing to do when you're painting the salt is you wanna stay back from the panel about 16 to 18 inches so that the paint comes down and sticks the salt to the panel without blowing it away. And then once you have some pretty solid coverage of paint onto the salt, you can paint it like normal and let it dry for about 15 to 30 minutes, depending on the temperature and humidity of your area. I like to come through with a shop vac and pull the salt back up. Uh, that way it just pulls the salt directly directly up and gets on it before the paint is fully cured and it completely dries the salt to the panel. I let that fully dry and I come back and if there is still salt remaining you can just kind of wipe it away with your hand. If it's really stuck on there you could probably wipe the whole thing down with a wet rag and dissolve the salt. All right, step six, we're gonna do the graphic layout. This thing's dried for about 24 hours. I have all the salt removed. The best way I found to draw a graphic onto a panel like this and use it as a stencil is by using this masking film. Basically just a wide roll of low tack tape. You could probably accomplish the same thing with painter's tape. It's just gonna take you a lot of layers of tape. Now this is definitely one of the things I said in the disclaimer in the very beginning of this video. This is where it really starts to take some artistic ability if you're gonna just freehand sketch this onto the paper like I am. Look it up online, find some references. You can even use mine. There's gonna be plenty of opportunities at the end of the video to do some screen grabs. I'm just using a pencil, nothing real special here. I'm just drawing it out and, and I'm gonna try to figure out the shape that I like. And we're gonna actually start utilizing this masking film as a stencil. So you're gonna to wanna to grab an X-Acto knife. Uh, you can use a razor blade if you want. I think that X-Acto knives have better control. And we're just gonna start lightly cutting this thing. Step seven, we're gonna apply the white paint. I'm gonna remove all the elements that are gonna be white, including the entire mouth, but I'm gonna hang on to the piece that I removed because I'm gonna need those later. And I'm going to apply flat white paint because I think it's the most appropriate for the theme that we're doing here. After that white paint has a chance to dry, we're going to move on to step eight, which is the red paint. So now I need to go grab that mouthpiece and reapply it to what I just painted. And I'm going to remove everything that needs to be painted red, which is going to be the tongue, the gums, and the iris of the eyeball. You want to make sure that you're not pushing down too hard on your razor blade. You only want to cut through the masking film, not into the substrate that you're painting on top of. Step nine is going to be black paint. You're going to want to remove everything on the masking film that's going to be black, which is going to be the inside of the mouth, the outline of the mouth, and the eyebrow and outline of the eye. And you're also gonna need to mask off all the red and the white that you just painted. And the easiest way I found to do that was just to lay a whole new clean sheet of masking film on top of your painting and cut it all out again. It's a little redundant, but it'll ensure that nothing gets paint on it where it doesn't need to be. You wanna spray on one or two coats of flat black. Give that a little bit of time to dry. Now let's peel off all that masking film and see what I got. At this point, we have a pretty basic looking shark nose panel. It looks good, I like where this is going. Looking back at it now, I probably should have used the salt technique in the graphic as well to help give it a little bit more worn down effect. That's really no big deal, because right now we're gonna move on and we're gonna wear off some of the paint. We're just gonna use a red Scotch-Brite pad. Focus on some particular areas that you think should be thinner. 
you don't want to scratch all the way through of everything, but you just kind of knock down all the paint and help smooth it all together. Okay, that looks good. Let's move on to some bottom graphics. Now the way that I've found to do this is you actually cut one out of another piece of paper or cardboard and you actually make a little stencil. Now if you want to, you could actually stencil this onto the panel. I'm not that brave. I want to make sure the layout looks good. So I'm going to lay down another piece of masking film, draw some guidelines, take my stencil and actually draw the bomb onto the masking film. and then cut it out with an X-Acto knife. And that way I know exactly where everything is laid out and where it needs to be. I'm gonna use the salt technique on this one. Hit it with some yellow paint. And peel it off and there we go. Step 12, weathering rust and just general grossification of this panel. Okay, check it out. What I do is I mix up three acrylic paints and one is a medium brown, a rust colored orange, a green that sort of matches the green of the panel, but it has a brown hue to it. I like to start off by dousing the entire panel in water because I'm gonna take this medium brown and I'm gonna run across all along the edge of it and around the bullet holes and, and some of the cracks and some of the rivets and just hit it again with water to get that to run and streak. And that's just gonna put in that first layer of dinge and just change the overall hue of it to a, a dirty shade of brown. Then I'm gonna come in with that rust orange color and I'm just gonna dab the corners and dab some areas and, and hit some rivets with it. I like to blot it out with some paper towels and hit it with some more water and then you just kind of keep repeating this process until you start to get the look that you're going for. It also helps if you get an area done that you really like to hit it with a hairdryer so that it dries off the paint and kind of locks everything down for you. I also want to pay special attention to the bullet holes because they are kind of one of the key focal points. So I want to make sure there's some rust lines dripping out of it and you just hit that with a real wet brush. Repeat the water process over again. You can also see in the corner right here is where I dabbed it with that darker green. It just kind of gives it a dirtier, almost like an oil effect, like it maybe had some grease on it that dispersed into the paint. You're really just kind of creating a story with the weathering process here. Step 13, we're going to create a shadow line. All I do for this is run a piece of masking tape over the rivets and along that body line that we cut earlier. I use a little airbrush for this. It's not 100% necessary. It just makes a little bit of a cleaner paint job. You can do this with spray paint, you just gotta do a little bit more masking. And what you do is, you don't actually wanna paint the line with the spray paint, you wanna paint off to the side of it and let the overspray catch and create the shadow line for you. Step 14, moving on to clear coat. Once everything is dry, once everything is sat around and dried up for a while, you wanna hit it with a matte clear coat. And just the matte clear coat really helps drive home the overall appearance we're going for. Okay, now that the clear coat is dry, we have another good looking panel, but, these bullet holes present another problem for us. They stick out the back a good quarter inch. So if you wanted to hang this on the wall, that's gonna be a little of an issue. So I'm gonna show you how I make a frame for this using a single two by four. Step 15, ripping down the two by four. I wanted to get rid of those rounded edges, so what I do, set the blade at a depth that's gonna get rid of the short edge, and then I'll cut the other side of it to actually get the dimensional size of wood that I need. Then setting the blade at a little bit of higher depth so that it rips through the face of it which came out to be about inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter. I'm gonna drop the blade down to about a quarter inch coming out of the table and I'm gonna use that to cut a channel on both sides of the stick I just cut. And you'll see why I did that here in a second after I get done cutting the 45 degree angles. Now I'm using a miter chop saw for this. You don't need to use a chop saw. If you really hate your life, you could cut this by hand. But since I have the tool, I'm gonna to go ahead and use it. 
Measurements for this are kind of indicative off of what you're creating. My panel came out to be about 16 by 24, and the inside measurement of my frame needs to be just a hair under that. So those are the measurements I'm gonna use to build my frame with. Step 17, glue and screw. Now that we have all of our pieces cut out, I'm gonna use some wood glue on the end grain here. I've also drilled a pilot hole on the bottom of the frame to run a screw into to help hold everything together. Now a little trick here is if the 45 doesn't fit as snug as you'd like, you can shovel some wood glue and some sawdust into that crack to kind of fill the gap. That way when you go to stain it later on, that the stain has something to grab onto. Step 18, I start sanding the frame. I just hit everything with the orbital sander, again just with 120 grit. I knock off all that sawdust that I glued on earlier, and you can see how it filled that crack in real nice, which is going to lead me up to step 19. I'm going to hit the entire frame with a wire brush. Now what this does, it raises the wood grain. We have this patina panel that we just created. It'd be look kind of weird just to put a nice polished frame around it. I want to make this wood look a little bit more weathered. So that's where the wire brush comes in. I just attach it to the end of the drill. I run it over the face of the frame until it achieves the look that I'm after. Step 20, I start staining the wood. Because I raised the grain of the wood, I'm going to really need to force the stain down into the crevices and wait for it to dry. Step 21, clear coat. I like to use this Verathane Ultimate Polyurethane Water-Based Interior Clear Coat. It's a spray application. It does look a little milky when it's wet, but when it dries, it makes a nice seamless finish. Step 22, I am finally at the assembly process. I take the panel, I slide it into the channel I cut earlier, and then I take the top piece of the frame and I screw it down. I don't glue this portion in case it ever needs to come apart, but you know what, after all that, I think it's finished. All right, there you have it in 20 some odd steps and you too could be the proud owner and maker of your very own shark nose panel. I hope you learned something, I hope you had a good time. I'm gonna have all the products I use linked in the description below. Leave me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, let me know what you think. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell notification, or, or don't, I'm, I'm not here to run your life. Thanks for hanging out with me today. And I'll try better next time. I'm gonna preemptively answer some questions that I think might come up. The first one being, if it's an aluminum airplane, would it rust? And the answer is no, it doesn't, it wouldn't. But you know what doesn't look as cool as regular rust is aluminum corrosion. So really just the rust was an artistic choice. Isn't the scale incorrect to be on an airplane? It's really just a cool way to shovel all the P-40 airplane elements into one frameable piece of artwork. Is this a historically accurate piece? No, not even close. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, let me know down below. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today and making it all the way to the very end of this video.